welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History. I'm Claire Ridgway, I'm the author of that book just there, On This Day in Tudor History, as well as several other Tudor history books. I'm also founder of the Anne Boleyn Files website and the Tudor Society website. Okay, today's On This Day in Tudor History, I'm taking you back to the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, towards the end of her reign. On this day in Tudor history, the 15th of April, 1599, Robert Devereux, second Earl of Essex, who was of course a favourite of Queen Elizabeth I, was sworn in as Lord Lieutenant of Ireland after his arrival in Dublin, following a very rough voyage. He'd been confirmed in the post on the 30th of December 1598, but had not left England until the 27th of March 1599. Now, Essex had high hopes for his time in Ireland, which he planned to be as short as possible. He believed that he could handle the Irish situation crushing uh, the rebel Earl of Tyrone's forces in record time and zoom back to the English court, something which was very important to him because he believed that while he was away that his enemies would have the advantage. With him out of the way, they'd be poisoning the Queen's mind against him. So it was imperative that he got the Irish situation under control as quickly as possible so he could uh, get back to England as fast as possible. However, things didn't go according to plan in Ireland. And this appointment, the appointment of Lord Lieutenant of Ireland, this ended up actually being the start of the end for poor Essex. Well, I say poor Essex, but uh, I think it's actually down to him all the trouble. Essex's priority, as I said, was to get back to Ireland, um, get back to England, sorry. So he ended up meeting uh, for a parley with the Earl of Tyrone in September 1599 and agreeing to a truce, something which he thought was the best way of handling the situation as fast as possible. But this was something that Elizabeth had not given him permission to do. She'd given him no authority to meet with the Earl, the rebel Earl, and to organise this truce. And um, this amounted him doing this and then uh, deciding that he was then, that everything was fine in Ireland, this truce was there and he was going to go back. This amounted in Elizabeth and her council's eyes to desertion and disobedience. On the 24th of September 1599, Essex left Ireland for England, again without the Queen's permission. On the 28th of September 1599, he strode into Queen Elizabeth I's private bedchamber at Nonsuch Palace, unannounced and saw the Queen. She wasn't even ready for the day, so she had no makeup on. Uh, she was missing her mask of youth, you know, her the makeup, the heavy makeup that she wore. She didn't have her wig on. She was completely unprepared and she wouldn't have wanted him to see her like that. She wouldn't have wanted anyone to see her like that. This was private and he just strode into her bed bedchamber, something that just wasn't done. He then had two further meetings with the Queen that day and in the final one Elizabeth uh, pressed him to explain himself, to tell her, you know, what on earth were you doing in Ireland? Then the next day he was called before the Queen's Council and interrogated for, I think it was nearly five hours. The council concluded that the truce that uh, Essex, uh, you know, negotiated and settled with the Irish rebels was indefensible and that his return to England without the Queen's permission was a desertion of duty. He was then put under house arrest because of what he had done. Then, a few months later, in June 1600, he appeared before a special court and he was punished by being deprived of his public office and he was also punished by being confined to his home further, he had further house arrest. 
However, in August he was granted his freedom, although his sweet wines monopoly, which was his major source of income, was not renewed. So he had completely fallen out of favour, <clears throat> was being punished for what he'd done. But when you think about it, it was all his own fault because he, he didn't obey the Queen and the Queen was his boss. If only at this point Essex had focused on trying to get back into Queen Elizabeth I's good books. He could have apologised to her, he could have flattered her, he could have appealed to her for mercy, he could have completely humbled himself in front of the Queen and that probably would have meant him climbing back into favour because Elizabeth, before this point, had absolutely doted on him. She'd kind of treated him a bit like a son. Um, he'd been a real favourite of hers. And, you know, even though he'd been arrogant in the past, she'd, she'd kind of found that charming before. So if he'd acted like that, if he'd been sensible, then he could have climbed back into favour. But instead, he'd let the fact that he'd got enemies at court, that there was this faction that was led by Robert Cecil and that they might be trying to get, you know, the, the Queen, uh, you know, against him. He, he focused on that. He, he felt that people, the arrogant Essex, felt that people were trying to bring him down. And he made the fatal mistake of trying to enlist the support of the Scottish King, James VI, against his enemies at court, against this sort of faction that he saw being led by Robert Cecil. He planned a coup to seize control of the court, the Tower of London and the city, and to remove his enemies from power so that, you know, they wouldn't be poisoning the Queen against him and that he'd be in control, he'd be the one telling Elizabeth what to do and advising her. On the 8th of February 1601, Essex's rebellion took place as Essex and his supporters marched from Essex's home into the city of London with Essex crying, For the Queen, for the Queen, the Crown of England is sold to the Spaniard, a plot is laid for my life. Unfortunately, the citizens of London just decided to completely ignore these men marching through the streets and didn't join them. And as you will know from my videos, if you've seen them for the 25th of February and the 13th of March, this rebellion, well, you can't even call it a rebellion, this march was a complete flop and Essex and his followers uh, ended up having to surrender. Um, Essex was tried for high treason on the 19th of February 1601 and condemned to death as a traitor and he was executed on the 25th of February 1601 on Tower Green and I'll give you links uh, for my videos on his execution and also my video on his um, the hangings of his followers, his fellow conspirators, which is from the 13th of March, uh, because that just gives you a few more details about the, um, the rebellion, Essex's rebellion. But for now, I'll leave you with a little bit of trivia about this man, Robert Devereux, Earl of Essex. As well as being a favourite of Queen Elizabeth I, he was actually related by blood to Elizabeth I. He was the great-grandson of Mary Boleyn, and Mary, of course, was the sister of Queen Elizabeth I's mother, Anne Boleyn. So you've got Mary Boleyn. She had a daughter called Catherine Carey, who married Francis Knowles. They had a daughter called Lettice, um, and she was the mother of Robert Devereux, Earl of Essex. So there you go, that's the links, that's the blood relationship to Queen Elizabeth I. So that's what happened on this day in Tudor history, the 15th of April, 1599. Robert Devereux, Earl of Essex, um, was sworn in as Lord Lieutenant of Ireland a position that ended up being his undoing, which was totally his fault. His arrogance, his paranoia just led, led him to making a complete mess of things. 
Still doesn't mean that uh, I think he should have been executed though. I do think it's a sad end to a man that had a very prestigious career. But uh, risky times, risky positions uh, when he was serving the, the monarch in the Tudor period. Well, I'll be back tomorrow with another Tudor history event. I do hope you're enjoying these on this day in Tudor history uh, videos. You can subscribe by just clicking the button down there, hit the bell to be notified. And of course you can go back and browse through all the videos that I've done already. And there are plenty of other videos on this channel as well for you to enjoy. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care, bye bye.